Cause Lord, they hate to hear your message Though I'm geared with your protection Your armor that I've been blessed with No stressing When I'm trying to teach them all your lessons They looking at me crazy Like I got a weird perspective Smear faces Lord, they hate to hear your message Though I'm geared with your protection Your armor that I've been blessed with No stressing When I'm trying to teach them all your lessons They looking at me crazy Like I got a weird perspective Yo, yo, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's the Weird Perspective Podcast, and we are back, baby. Yeah. Season number three. It's the year 2024, live. and we're going to be doing things a little bit different. As you can see, we are live in person. I got my main man sitting right next to me, the one and only, my brother from another. Speaker. Brother in Christ. Tes- testify. <laughs> One of God's most faithful servants, always willing to give an encouraging word, Mr. Raymond Woods. Thank you, sir. And the man behind the scenes that y'all can't see is my other brother that could be no other, Mr. Adam Hansen. He he holding it down on the cameras. Y'all will see him uh, at another time. (laughs) Beautiful. And I'm Derry, the host that does the most. Y'all can take that how y'all want to take it but this is the weird perspective podcast season number three we back and happy to be here very happy um i feel like ed mcmahon right now i feel like ed mcmahon you remember uh johnny carson uh the johnny carson show back in the day this is a deep reach and johnny carson would have ed mcmahon just as his hype man okay and he would just be whenever johnny would say a joke ed would be like ha and then just he would just like laugh and he'd be like tell me more and i feel like that's I feel like Ed McMahon right now. I say that I say that as a privilege. It's a privilege to be Ed McMahon to your Johnny Carson. Okay. Um, we got the old demographic locked up. They gonna say they talking about Johnny Carson? Yeah, I have no idea who he's no. talking about. But I'm gonna rock with it. I don't. Yeah, this, me and Ray's the same Johnny age. Johnny Carson has swag. But I, I, he definitely spent a lot more time in the house watching movies, fair and enough. I did it. But anyway, back to my intro. <laughs> Letting y'all know what this podcast and this YouTube channel is all about, right? And so we want to motivate, inspire, encourage, and challenge you to go deeper in your walk with the Lord. And so at the end of this video, don't just listen to what we say, but we want you to pick up a Bible. We want you to get into some prayer, right? And we want you to seek the Lord for yourself. That is the whole purpose of this channel. That is the purpose of why we do this podcast, because we just want to challenge perspectives and bring a weird perspective, as you can see on my shirt. And so uh, shameless plug, shameless plug. And so hit that like button, hit subscribe to the channel. Listen, before we get into the other stuff that we're going to get into, I I need to talk to to my viewers and to my listeners, those of y'all listening on Spotify. But this goes out to the people on YouTube. I'm going to start with the YouTube viewers first. At the point, at the time of this recording, we only have about 95, 96 subs. Sub sandwiches. We are on the road to <laughs> a thousand <laughs> subs, <laughs> sub sandwiches. <laughs> we on the road to it. I'm trying to be serious, oh, right? Okay, we trying okay. to get. I'm trying to get some subs. Yeah. Su- yeah. Trying to get subscribers. You talking about subs? I was holding that one back I, okay. as soon as you said subs. I'm like, everyone think of sub sandwiches. I'm just gonna say it, but go ahead. Anyway, man, we trying to grow the channel. Right. And so we I think that we did a good job with the content that we brought last yeah. season. Yeah. No, I mean, we, some we did, of the we videos. Did a great job. I think we did a good job with this podcast that like, we ain't got we ain't got no money. We ain't got nobody backing us. Speak for yourself. We work for nonprofits. If you got some money, let me know. Let me hold some. We'll uh, talk about that. I retract, I, I retract when, the camera, my when the camera statement. when the cameras is off. But listen, we just want to grow the channel. And the reason why I want to grow the channel is because we want the, the videos to reach. Uh, a bigger audience right and so that won't happen unless you like and subscribe to the channel and so we're trying to hit a thousand subs this year not sandwiches subscriptions for yourself. people um and so man do us a solid hit the like button subscribe to the channel share the video comment ask us questions engage with us man we Easy. we want all that stuff so do us a solid and do that for us all right please and thank you okay now that's enough about me ray What's going on? I father their child. 
uh, with my wife. Okay. You got you got to add in that last. Yeah, part. you gotta. Um, you can't pause after you yeah, say I you. I can't pause. And the way you pause. said it, we thought we was like, "Are you in sin?" Like it was Gen- we- like it was Jenny Jones right now. Yeah, you father you, the child. Maury show. Are you are the father? Why, why am I forgetting the T? Fathered. I'm saying fathered. <laughs> I fathered a child. But no, I, I, me and my wife um, have been dealing with parenthood. Um, my son, RJ. Congratulations. Thank Shout you, out to RJ. Shout out to Marianne for holding it down in your Man, belly for nine months. Letting me, She's letting me podcast right now when I could be at home um, changing diapers. So shout mm. out to my beautiful wife. And happy, happy Mother's Day. We're recording this right after Mother's Day. So to all the mothers out there, God bless you. You are literally doing the Lord's work um, and just... Pop- now, now I know. Like sand, populating earth, sand. What? Say populating it. earth. No, nah, see, you got to bring it to procreation. I'm talking about the beauty of motherhood. Like, I mean, that is beauty. Populating no. the earth. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> without, I retract my. Without pre- mothers, nobody's here. I, re- I retract my. That's how the Lord statement. designed that He set it up to be: is that mothers will give birth to people, other human beings. But counterpoint to that. There are some people out there who mother who have never had a child. So the mothers who are mentors, the mothers who watch after their nieces and nephews and their little cousins, you can you can mother even if you've never been a mother, because that's just the grace God has given you. So um, so thank you for doing all that you do. And like now having a son and seeing how my wife is like Mother's Day, it hits a lot different. Mm -hmm. So for real, big, big ups to all the moms out there. Yeah. Shout out to my wife, Tawatha. You better be watching this. Uh, shout out to my mom. Amen. Uh, she's out in Ohio, so miss you, love you, and uh, shout out to all my sisters. Everybody got kids, so if you a mother, if you want to be a mother, um, you know we <coughs> love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Um, keep doing, keep doing your thing. And so, uh, really quick before we dive into this episode, which is gonna be an amazing episode, by the way. Um. Man, we want to bring you guys some great content. So this season three, so we got a lot of new things going on. As you can see, we are in person, so that is going to be yeah. every episode. No more behind the behind the screen, me looking into a camera. I can see him. We could dap it up. We can laugh. We can high five. Uh, we, we can, can fight. We can fight. Yep. So you know, I used to like to fight back in the day. I don't know about now. I don't know how my recovery would be, but you know, we do all those things that brothers do. Uh, but we're going to bring out a lot of fun topics, right? We're going to be talking about uh, the top famous verses that a lot of pastors use out of context. That's going to be a fun episode. Uh, we're going to be talking about should Christians vote? Mm. Should Christians vote in today's world? Yeah. Because it's a lot of things going on. You vote one way, people hate you. You vote the other way, they're going to stone you. So we don't even know. If you don't vote, then they'll crucify you. Yeah, exactly. So what you know, we're talking about what is beauty. We're going to be talking about that. Um, and we're going to be having a ton of exciting guests that's going to be live and direct with us here. And so um, stay tuned for all those things. But today, today yes, sir. is the day that the Lord has made. And, and we will be rejoice glad. and be glad in it. There you go. And so we're talking about would you, those of y'all watching, would you attend a gay wedding? Mr. Ray, would you? Attend the great a gay wedding. Um, my answer is loaded. Can can I give a little background first, like to the to the listeners real quick? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, okay, so the reason why we're talking about this is because a few months ago, a few weeks ago, in the Christian um, YouTube space, blogosphere, all over like the Christian social media, people were talking about this topic because um, a prominent minister of the gospel. Alistair Beg, <laughs> Alistair Beg, like he's watching this right now. Um, he he may be. God bless you, sir. Um, he, I mean, just really a great minister of the gospel. Like I've actually followed mm-hmm. him like on and off. He he, and he's kind of in that circle of the the John Pipers, the the Bodies, and all them stuff. You always see him like in, in that company. And uh, he has a really famous radio show, Focus on the Family. Mm-hmm. Um, and even though I, he has like a really thick, I believe, Scottish accent, but he um, I think he he has his church in like Tennessee. It's like right in the middle of the Bible Belt is, is his church, I believe. Adam was giving me um, he, the shaking head emoji. So uh, uh, our producer being a back like, you know, there you go. <laughs> so um, so he was um, he was doing like a Q&A 
promoting um uh, promoting the book he had coming out and the question was asked to him about what he would do it was a um it was a question asked to him on his radio program by a grandmother whose grandson was gay and she asked mr Begg if she should attend the wedding or not and like uh, as a bible believing christian um and his answer set off a firestorm in, in the Christian, like, just talk space. Like, every everybody had an opinion about it. It was very controversial because he said something I think a lot of people weren't expecting him to say. And if I could, I can read, like, uh, the exact quote. So, quote, um, I mean, this is taken from the, from the interview, so there's a frame to it. Okay. And in a conversation like that just a few days ago, and people may not like this answer, but I asked the grandmother, does your grandson understand your belief in Jesus? Yes, she replied. Does your grandson understand that your belief in Jesus makes it such that you can't countenance in any affirming way the choices that he has made in life? Yes. I said, well then, okay. As long as he knows that, then I suggest that you do go to the ceremony and I suggest that you buy them a gift. Oh, she said, what? You know, she, she was caught off guard. And then he continued, well, here's the thing. Your love for them may catch them off guard, but your absence will simply reinforce the fact that they said, these people are what I always thought, judgmental, critical, and unprepared to countenance anything. So that was the quote. That's what he said, and he stood on business about it. He doubled down on it, even when they asked him. And everyone had an opinion. So, I mean, if you want to see, like, um, what people had to say about it, you can literally just type it in on YouTube, and, like, every Christian podcast or YouTuber had an opinion. And, you know, we're coming to it um, a couple of months after the fact. I mean, people are still debating. But it's kind of cool that we get to talk about it now because we've had a chance to gather our thoughts. And it's cool that, you know, we don't have to talk about something just because it's hot. Cause I think a lot of people rush in with their opinions just to be current. And we, we like being current, but we also like being informed. We also like praying about what we want to say. So I think yeah. we can bring a little bit more nuance to the discussion than people may be used to. Yeah. Now I say all that cause you're still asking me the question, would I attend a, a gay wedding? So you want my answer up front? No, we're going to, we're going to dive into your, to your answer. Okay. I wanted to go back to, why this topic of gay marriage or attending a gay wedding, uh, why, man, this has been going on forever. This has been a non top a, a nonstop uh debate or discussion for decades. Um, and every year it seems to get more popular and more popular and somebody will say something and people will take it. So I wanted to share some stats real quick that I found really, really interesting um and so i'm gonna just share them real quick and this is a a, a poll it was done by pure uh, pew research um and this is from 2019 uh, and it was reported back in 20 uh in 2004 um that same sex uh that same sex marriage was a margin of 60 to 31 percent hmm. so uh sixty percent of Americans opposed uh gay marriage, right? And is that like Christian or is that just Americans in general? This was Americans across, across the board. The board. Okay. Yeah. And so and then they, they broke it down. Um and then as of twenty nineteen, a majority of Americans now, sixty one percent support same sex marriages, while thirty one percent oppose it. Mm -hmm. So that means in fifteen years the stat has pretty much flipped upside down. And so I'm curious as to what the stat will be now, even we're, we're five years later, of what the stats look like. Because that 31% is probably even less, um, especially with quotes and things, people being able to take, they might take his quote or what he said and might add that to that um, support stat. So I'm curious you know, and I, I'm and so we're gonna talk about it today. But that I thought that was an interesting stat. Have you? Heard, I know I didn't share this with you before we recorded, but 
Have you looked up any of these stats? Um, they're usually if you go to church in America every once in a while they'll they'll bring they'll bring up the stats about, you know, church either it's like the divorce rate or either it's the rate of gay marriage. So it's it's in the um atmosphere. You yeah. know. I'm not I'm not shocked. I'll say it like this, with with <clears throat> statistics, I'm usually not shocked. And that's not me trying to be jaded. They're like, Oh, like, you know, this amount of people are getting divorced. I'm like, Oh, okay. Fallen world, you know. So Yeah. All right. So I mean yeah, that's the dilemma in the Christian circle with gay marriage. And so, yeah, let's get into your answer. Okay, my answer um, at first blush would probably be would I attend a gay wedding? I would say, I would say no. But then I would, once I like debated that and I thought about it, and the immediate answer came up as no, I started to interrogate that answer. Okay. And I started to say, well, Ray, why would you not attend a gay wedding? And um, I remember we talked about this because I like to think of things in stories, you know, like me, like I, I, I fancy myself a storyteller. Um, and I remember I was posing to you a scenario and I said, like, let's, and I'll make it really short. Let's say you worked at an office and you're a born again believer and you work in the world and you have two coworkers. One, one coworker is Shelly, uh, straight, heterosexual female. One coworker is John, gay, homosexual male. And you're both cordial with them. You know, you're perhaps a little bit more cordial with, uh, with Shelly uh, than you are with John. Um, but you know, you it's, it's the workplace. You keep up appearances, you do water cooler talk, you know, whatever. But you, you find out that Shelly and John both are engaged and they're to be married. And you get an invite to both weddings. Now you immediately are like, and now here's a, now here's the catch. Both weddings are on the same day because you were like, dang, I'm gonna have to like make up an excuse for John because um because you know Shelly's have I may be butchering this but Shelly Shelly's having her wedding John is having his wedding they both happen to be on the same day so you don't have to make up an excuse for John you just have to say you know what Shelly asked me first I'm going to go to her wedding so you go to Shelly's wedding both of them have the trappings of a Christian wedding right they're they're both in the church John's is obviously a gay affirming church Shelly's is a more you know traditional Episcopalian, you know, like just one of those like like Lutheran, whatever. And uh, you have the minister that they've hired. You know, he reads from the holy book. Somebody quotes one of the bridesmaids, one of the uh, groomsmen. They quote um, the first Corinthians thing. Love is patient. Love is kind. You know, whatever. It was even a joke in that movie. Um, what was that movie with Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson? Wedding crash. Wedding crash. How they were sitting up joking about how okay, they're going to say First Corinthians. No, they're going to say this this verse because they had been to so many weddings, how yeah. they had always said that verse. So they say the verse. They read the vows. And now, keep in mind, Shelly and John both aren't believers. They both don't know Jesus. A after they say yes and they're married, Shelly drops dead and John drops dead right at the altar. Where are they both going? Without Jesus? Without Jesus. They're going to hell. They're going to hell. Okay. That's just hardcore. So I'm thinking about that. The reason why I brought up that story was because when I when I put it to myself like that and I thought through it that way, I'm like, is there really any difference when you're talking about unbelievers, when you're talking about people who don't know Jesus, whether they're straight or gay, going to their wedding? when it comes down to it or is it just a matter of what you're comfortable with or what christian like modern christian culture is deemed acceptable like this is you can have unbelieving friends who are like this but you can't have unbelieving friends who are like that and that's why i started to interrogate that answer like ray is it just because like you you would feel uncomfortable in that space you know because shelly is not a believer either you know, I'm like dead in her transgressions and sin just as much as John is, mm -hmm. you know. So 
and this is getting more into like when I bring up the scriptures, but I just want to start start at that and get your response to it. <clears throat> um, so amazing story, by the way. Thanks. Just be coming up with stories. Um, man, I'm mad because I don't really want to go to that wedding. I don't want to go if they're going to just drop dead, though. But anyway. You didn't, you didn't know ahead of time. <laughs> you, you can return, you're good. It's all good. Right. I could have saved myself a couple hundred dollars. Um, but no, in all seriousness, um, in response to your story and what you just said, um, yeah, I w- I don't like pick and choose based off of a person's eternal like salvation. Like I I don't think through like man if this person was to die unless they asked me and we were talking about it. Um, and we we're talking about you know sin and all those type of things. So I I normally don't judge people's eternal resting place where they're gonna be. Um, but as asking your question directly, um, wait, are you asking me? What? I guess I would say like once I once I thought of that thought of that question in terms of the story, uh-huh. I came to realize I don't really think there's really much of a difference if there is any difference between a straight wedding or a gay wedding if they're not believers. Okay. So if they're believers, that's a whole that's, that's a, a whole, whole yeah, it's a whole nother so another uh conversation, right? Because then that, if they are believers, um yeah, yeah, that's a whole nother thing. But anyway, so I still wouldn't go to the wedding, right? I would go to the straight couples wedding. Um and here's the reason why um, what you're bringing up is it is we're defining now what marriage is. And so that's like a whole nother podcast. We could take the rest of the time and literally talk about what is a marriage, what makes a marriage legitimate in the eyes of God. And so really quick, because it's a deep, uh, a deep thing. And there's like a ton of verses that uh, we can go to to give our answers. But giving you this in the shortest way that I possibly can. um God defines marriage, right? He's the one who made it. He's the one who put it in place. He's the one who um, established it and told us how it should be. And he said that marriage is to be between a man and a woman. Um, you know, and marriage is not just this piece of paper that we sign, but it is a covenant, uh, a covering covenant. Yeah, that we're going into with God. Um, that is how it should be, right? That is how. Um, we should be honoring God in our marriage. Now, there are people who get married in other religions um, and things like that, but I I will go to that wedding and not go to the gay wedding because, for one, I don't think, uh, yeah, I don't think the wedding is a wedding because God said that it needs to be between a man and it needs to be between a woman. So right off the bat, it's not a wedding. And so... That's not from me. That's from the Lord. Y'all can take it up with him. Um, that's how God defines what marriage is between a man and a woman. And so um, right off the bat, and I had these conversations with people that are extremely close to me. Um, I have a gay sister. Um, and, yeah, we've had conversations about this before. But, yeah, I wouldn't go to my sister's wedding if she got married. She knows that I love her. She knows that I care about her. Um, but she knows how we grew up and she knows my values. She knows that I'm a believer. Um, and therefore I I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go because it's a celebration of sin, right? The two straight people getting married, they are not no longer, right? They were in sin, even though they might not be saved, but they're not continuing practicing, um, continuing in practice of fornication now that they are married right in the proper way the them getting south them getting saved we have to work on that right that is a thing that you know god to call them but god can't use the gay marriage at all there is nothing good that's going to come from that at all there is god can't use this as a testimony to give to the world of how this gay couple stayed together did things and none of those things he can he can use if we're if we want like examples of what a, a a healthy relationship and marriage looks like and all that stuff we can't do it with the gay couple 
But with the straight couple, even if they're not saved, there is a ton of good things that can come from that. Number one is uh, being fruitful and multiplying, right? Um, this is a, a home that is going to be, if they, when they, once they have children, it's going to have a father and a mother. So you have both roles, both type of people in the household um, raising up their kids. Um, and, um, yeah, so that's those are a couple examples, right? And then once God does save that married, the, the straight couple, then there's even more testimony that comes along with that. So, yeah, I, there is nothing good that comes from a gay relationship. And don't just take my words for it. Go out, read. Um, there's a ton of people who wrote books on gay marriage, Jackie Hill Perry being one of them. Go look at her books. Go watch her YouTube videos. Um, she talks about it. And this is a person who's come from that lifestyle. Um, and so that's why I wouldn't go. And if I had a conversation with them, if they came to the church, we would love them and we would lovingly tell them that it is sin. And you can still come to the church. Um, but if you're going to practice any sin, and it's not just for the gay couple, anybody who is openly practicing sin yeah. and you claim to be a Christian Right. There is discipline and things that have to take place. Right. There's accountability. Right. Just like we read about in um, first Corinthians chapter five, where the, the son was having sex with his stepmama. And then the ch Paul was like, man, why y'all got this dude in the church? Kick him out of there. Um, but so, yeah, you know, there's a whole bunch of different things that goes in that. But, yeah, I know my answer was kind of long. I didn't mean it to be that long. But no, no, I mean, the short answer is I wouldn't go um, both of those couples everybody needs jesus right everybody needs jesus um and so there isn't a separate hell for gay people i just want to say that off the bat um i have i've been around gay people my whole life so i am not like awkward when they come around i've had conversations with them um, um i have friends my wife has friends um we are we talk to people who are practicing homosexuals I don't treat them any different. I don't look down on them. If they want to talk to me about Jesus, we will have that conversation and talk about Jesus. And I will tell them why they need Jesus. If they ask me if they're living in sin or is homosexuality a sin, I will say yes. And then I will take them to the scriptures and show them. Um, but, yeah, I've welcomed them in my home. I don't, you know, shun them because just as well as I would tell them that they're wrong, I'll tell the gangbanger, the drug dealer, the friend, the the dude who's sleeping around with a whole bunch of girls, I would tell them the same thing, you know. Um, sin is sin. I, would, I don't discriminate. Jesus don't discriminate. I don't discriminate, right? Um, so, yeah, that's I, I, that's I, how I would handle it. I would say, I would jump back because you said like, you said we're trying, we we need to define marriage because if we're going to go deep, but I would say I don't think it's actually about defining marriage. I think I think you have to have a, a definition of it. I mean, it, I think it's pertinent to the conversation. But to me, it's like defining. It's the difference between what is alive and what is dead, between who is dead in their sins and who is alive in Christ. Because my my whole point is that like. To me, if um, if you're not a Christian, if you're not following Jesus, it doesn't matter if you're gay or straight. True. At the end of the day. Because like if you if you're a man and a woman and you get married, that's that's what I want to ask you. Because you brought up like weddings of in other faiths. Because like if there's a Hindu wedding, if there's a wedding that um is is a Buddhist wedding, and you know would would you know would we go to that wedding? Would somebody go to that wedding? And I mean that's a that's a foreign that's an idol that's that's another god that's that's like standing in opposition. I mean, but that's how like that's how you can. In, look at it based on scripture mm -hmm. but i think you have christians who will more be more comfortable with that with the hindu wedding or a buddhist wedding than or even like a civil ceremony when you know you're like the government is the highest authority not not god then you know a gay wedding i'm not saying one is better than the other i'm just saying why the the hierarchy because for me it's not about like i, I like how how one pastor puts it it's like when he looks at when god looks at humanity post-crossed Mm -hmm. Now it's not it's not this. I mean, God sees race. He sees all these different things. You know, he he created us very diverse. But as far as like what the finality of what he sees, it's redeemed and unredeemed. Mm -hmm. It's light and it's dark, you know. And I think like 
when we think about this question is just I think sometimes we categorize sin as unbelievers and um and I'm just I just would want people maybe to ask themselves kind of maybe like Mr. Begg did like you know is the reason why I'm not going just because I don't feel comfortable going and is there really any difference like like at the end of the day because like you know I was going to say because like this is what this is what I was like searching for to say the straight wedding if you're if you're not following Jesus what's the difference because I don't see how God like I, I guess there are blessings in straightness mm -hmm. I, I guess or I guess just you're not the, going you're not going to heaven because you're straight exactly so if you're not going to heaven because you're straight and, you, and you're in an unredeemed straight marriage you know what's the difference between an unredeemed straight marriage and an unredeemed gay marriage i don't think there's a difference i think it's the so same boat. i heard this one pastor this is his quote he says marriage between an unbelieving man and woman are real marriages that fall short of god's highest purpose for marriage and what is god's highest purpose for marriage it is to represent what we Christians call like the Trinity, right? Um, you have um, a husband who is in that position of authority, not to say that he is God. Don't miss, don't take my words out of context. People be trying to do that. Um, but, you know, you have Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You have husband, wife, and then children. Um, and God has made that to operate in a certain way, right? That this is how he produces this is how he brings blessings this is how we populate the world this is how we show love to one another um it's all through this cycle and then it, it keeps going even flowing into outside of the home um and so god doesn't put sins in categories but we have and we have a good reason on why we put sin in categories right I'll give you an example um if i am if my wife which one would my wife be more upset with, me watching porn or me actually going out and cheating on her? Probably going out and cheating. Right? That is going to do a lot more uh, damage to our relationship than if she catches me maybe staring at a woman having a lustful thought or catch me watching porn. Uh, I mean, or if I have an affair and I cheat on her. Right? If I... Think about killing this dude, right? But I don't do it. But then I actually, on the other side of that, I actually do kill a dude. Which which one am I gonna get in trouble for? Which one killing, is killing which, the dude? Yeah. Right. And so God allowed us to put things um, things in categories because it shows like the weightiness of it, right? There is um, a responsibility. And so he doesn't, because it's all sin is sin to him, no matter what you do. But in, on this side of eternity, in the natural, um, we have to deal with things um, as they come. And so, yes, our sins have consequences, and they have different levels of consequences. But I would, I would push back on what that pastor said about it being a real, like a straight wedding, being a real relationship that fails to live, live up to God's standards because it's two people who are dead in their trans, transgressions and sin. You know, I mean, one thing I know, one thing I observe when I look at scripture is that, you know, God really doesn't have patience for hypocrites. People who put on the robes and they, like he always had, he was always really harsh with the Pharisees because they had the outward posturing of religion and we doing it right. Yo, on the outwardly, it looks like, you know, we got it all together. You know, we pray like, you know, we fast two times a week. We pray, we give tithes. But inwardly, y'all are ravenous wolves. So I think sometimes like, you know, I mean, because you, you can get really serious with it with with like a straight wedding. Is it just Christian cosplay with like all the trappings and stuff like that? Or is it like are you really submitting this relationship to Jesus? Are you really giving it up to him? Or is it just like, I just want to play. I, I just want to have the illusion that, you know, this is because I, I want the Christian decoration, which to me, I think is like, well, why are you using my God as decoration? If you're not going to really bow your knee to him, like, like, is there, is there really any difference? And I think it, I think it like, and I don't really think, I think it can be dangerous when Christians start to categorize sin. Now I know I hope I'm not taking this out of context, but I remember in the in the book of James, 
And James is a really dope book when it talks about like how Christians should relate to each other, because I know in the book of James, it talks about how if like if someone comes to church and they're wearing like really nice clothes. And they could sometimes get set in the front versus if somebody comes in the church, you know, and they're smelling really bad and they they're wearing like rags and they look really jacked up and they get seated like in the back. And then I think James, the quote is, have you not become evil, uh, evil judges with impure intentions in your heart or something like that? And I think sometimes when we ca when we categorize sin, especially as it relates to unbelievers, then we're in danger of being like judgmental in the wrong way. I think there is a right way to judge, but I think there's also a, like a wrong way to judge. And I think, I think it's, it's not judging correctly to say, to say that this wedding is more honorable to God. The straight wedding with unsaved people is more honorable to God than a gay wedding with unsaved people because it's people who by very nature of their birth are dishonoring God. They're covered in filthy rags. They're they're dead. They're dead in their sins. So if I go to one wedding, I, I'm saying I'm not saying like I'm the most open minded Christian in the world, but this is just me trying to look at it, look at the facts honestly, and just be like, is there really is there really a difference at the end of the day? between like a, a gay wedding and a straight wedding. And and I, 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 I'm failing to see like, like, like the difference outside yeah. of my own comfort level. Well, I know that there's places in the Old Testament where God told some people not to get married and I would have to uh, research it and bring it up where he told people not to marry outside of there. He told the Israelites not to marry a certain group of people and they still did and he didn't call their marriage not a marriage um i believe in some regards he still he still blessed them so um yeah i will have to do some more research um so i can give you an accurate answer but i believe that there are some places in the old testament where god told the israelites not to marry a certain group of people um and then they still did but he still blessed them so yeah and like i said one is celebrating sin and continuing in sin, and the other one is not, uh, even if they don't look at it. Like, for me, I would, if somebody asked me to marry them, my cousin did ask me to marry him, to him, but he lives in Dallas. So I told him unless he was paying for my flight and my whole family to come down to Dallas, I'm, I'll marry you, but we need to have actual uh, premarital counseling. And premarital counseling is because I want to tell you what marriage is. I want to give you the truth about marriage. And once I give you the truth about marriage and what it represents and what it is, um, after you do that, after you know that, hopefully you would repent and come to Christ. Um, but those seeds, you know, have been planted and then you, you go from there. But um, well, question, is your cousin a believer, though? Uh, no, he okay. believes in Jesus, but he's not he's not a Christian. So now if like if your cousin was gay and he came to you would you, would you give him the same explanation of what marriage is like and and, and Yeah, if he was if he was trying to marry a man, I would well first I would tell him if he wanted to talk to me, I would tell him that what they're doing is is not marriage. I wouldn't marry them um because it's not a marriage. But is it so it's not a marriage if they don't know Jesus? And uh, and they're gay and they want to get married, so that's definitely not a marriage. But if they don't know Jesus and they're straight and they want to get married, then it's just a little bit more of a marriage. I don't know if I said that right, but um, I, I got what you were, were trying. I hopefully the the people understood what you were trying to say. So if you want to clarify, you can. So but so if um, I understand what you were saying. Yeah. So you're saying like, if it's gay, then if if your cousin was gay and he wanted to get married, you would just be like. From the jump, this ain't a marriage. This is this is not right. And then I'll tell you why it's not right. But if he's straight, it would be a little bit more. To me, to me, it sounds like, and I could be wrong. There would be a little bit more of, of grace given because you're straight and you don't know Jesus, but at least you're on the right track. Exactly. But but and and with you getting married to a woman, right? God can work with that because you're doing it with in the way that he told us to do it the, the 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 covenant that comes from when we are 
both um, husband and wife is connected with Jesus, there's there's a covenant that comes and there's there's blessings and all those type of things that comes with that um, in your marriage to keep your marriage and sustain it. Um, that if an atheist or somebody who wasn't walking with the Lord, they don't necessarily have that that covering or they don't have that covering. Not necessarily. They don't have it at all yeah. because they're 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 not connected to the person who uh, who gave us the gift of marriage. So, yeah, it's and it's more likely that this couple, the straight couple can get married and live a life um, having kids and, and doing things the way other things that God has told us to do. Um, they're doing that. And so that at least that part, that that sexual immorality part of their relationship, they're not no longer in that type of sin. They got other sins that they need to deal yeah, with. Yeah, but, but that's the thing. Like, it's not because to me, like, it's to me, it's not a thing of they're no longer in that type of sin. It's it's the sin nature. It's like it doesn't matter if it's like because I think there's a scripture that says if you offend in one, you offend in all. So like, if, to to me, if you're unredeemed, because you're saying like, well, the the straight couple is more on the right track, even if they're if they're not believing in Jesus. But I'm like, you ain't even on the course. You haven't even, you haven't been admitted to the to the to the stadium yet because the admittance ticket is, is the blood of Jesus. And then there's, there's a sanctification process, whether you're, you're straight or whether you identify as straight or you identify as gay. Mm-hmm. So, so I think like, um, I, I would say this, both if the cousin was straight or if the cousin was gay, they would both need the conversation of this is what a marriage is because a marriage represents Jesus. But I don't know if I could say, I don't know. I don't know if, if it's theologically correct to say you're more on the right track because of, because you're straight than the gay couple is. Because if you don't know Jesus, you better not you your heart better not stop beating. And then you can be in front of Jesus and be like, I'm a little bit more on the right track. Cause you ain't even you ain't even on the track to me. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I just I think for me it's a lot more simpler um than just you know I want everybody to be to be saved and to no come doubt. to know the Lord but at the end of the day one is continuing on in sin and I'm not going to support that because this person is continuing living like a open like lifestyle uh of sin and then there's also other things that go on with that is it man did these people already have kids is there a, you know a home you tell them not to be together things be a, another broken home so there's other things to consider and to think through but just you know for me it's real simple is um i wouldn't marry a gay couple or i wouldn't attend their wedding is it is it like when it gets down to a dairy is it like are we really just talking about how a christian engages with the world you know like like how a Christian engages with the world. Let, let me bring up this uh, this scripture where it says, I wrote to you, this is 1 Corinthians 5, 9 through 11. I wrote to you in, in my letter, this is, I believe, the Apostle Paul, not to associate with sexually immoral people, not at all meaning the people of this world who are immoral or the greedy and swindlers or idolaters. In that case, you would have to <laughs> you would have to leave this world. I think that's hilarious because it's like like in that case you have to leave this world. Mm-hmm. But now I'm writing to you that you must not associate with anyone who claims to be a brother or sister, mm-hmm. but is sexually immoral or greedy, an idolater or a slander. It, it's it's funny too. Like we always zero in on the sexually immoral part, but how many people claim to be Christians and are greedy? And who have idols in their lives or who are slanderers, what you see online. And the Bible says not even to associate with those people or are drunk or drunkard or a swindler. Yeah. Do not even eat with such people. So to me, that's like that's the line of demarcation. It's not, well, do not associate with sexually immoral people. And then the Christians are like, yeah. And then it's like Paul is like, I'm not I don't mean the people in this world. You know, I mean, like, I mean, just the pe- like you'd have to leave this world but i mean like people who claim to be brothers or sisters they may not they might not even be brothers or sisters but they're just claiming to be because mm-hmm. you may have a brother or sister isn't that funny he says people who claim to be your brothers and sisters yeah. well I, i've i've had a, a situation where a person who claims to be a believer uh was a close friend of mine and that person was living a lifestyle that was 
ratchet, crazy, and I had to distance myself from him, right? Doesn't mean that I don't love him anymore. It doesn't mean that like if if he calls me and we we couldn't have a conversation, but that conversation would first start off with like, man, bro, how are you and where are you with yeah. Jesus? And me trying to restore him. And if once he rejects all that, it's just like, I don't even know what you really want me to say because you're openly living and doing all these other things um, that Jesus mm-hmm. wouldn't approve of. How, what, do, what do you want from, from this encounter? What do you want from this relationship? Yeah. Um, because like the Bible says, we hold each other accountable. We don't, the world's going to do what the world's going to do, just like Paul was saying. But we hold each other accountable and we build each other up. And then once somebody rejects that, it's just like it says in the passage I mentioned earlier, which is uh, 1 Corinthians, where the person was sleeping with his stepmom. Paul says, if that dude doesn't repent, you kick him out of the fellowship. You kick him out of the community. You treat him as an unbeliever, not to shame him and, and hope that he dies, but to uh, hopefully that would restore him, all right, so that he can repent and and realize like what he was done was evil, it was wrong, right? And so, um, but that's after we have a conversation. That's after I show you like that this is sin, that this is not okay. Um, and you go from there. Hmm. I mean, that's, yeah, that's a good point. I think um, too with that, let me find my place. The brother, if they claim to be a brother or sister, I think that's what I was saying before. And I think the one thing that just popped into my head, and uh, I thank you, God, for the for this insight, is it said they claim to be. That mean they may not be. You can claim to be, because I know that you, you could claim to be a Christian, but, but I mean, it's a whole bunch of people that come to church on Sundays. But no, but, but you but, know, no, but what I'm getting at is they can claim to be a brother or sister, but you do have some brothers and sisters I've known, like like Christians who have struggled struggled with alcohol mm-hmm. and who have struggled with gossip. And with idolatry, how many how many Christians, when there's like a, a sermon about idolatry, do they go up for prayer at the end? So, but it's that claiming to be like I'm claiming I'm a born again Christian. Isn't that what you hear a lot of nowadays? Like I'm a like I'm a gay Christian, or I'm a I'm a Hebrew Israelite, you know, Christian, or I'm I'm this type of well, Christian. Well, people, I, I I've yeah. experienced it all the time in evangelism. People say, "Oh man, I'm all you gotta do is believe, right?" And I believe that Jesus is real. And it was like, well, if you believe that he is who he says he is, then you should put your faith in him, yeah. and trust him with your life, and live, um, and 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 live a life that's pleasing to him in relationship with him, right? That should produce uh, that faith in Jesus. If you have real faith in Jesus, should push you to live for him. So, I, I just I just think the issue at the end of the day is that people, and I actually wrote this so I can get this. Um, I believe the issue is what are you esteeming above the cross of Christ? Because to me, like if you're, un- if you're an unbeliever, whether you're straight or you're gay and you're having a wedding at the end of the day, I really don't think there's a difference. It's what your comfort level is as a believer. What are you more comfortable with attending? And then if you're more comfortable attending a straight wedding, whether it's of the state, whether it has Christian trappings, whether it's Hindu versus you are less comfortable attending a gay wedding, I would just say like what what why is your why does the comfort level vary? I would say like what are the roots of that? Um, it, does it just make you uncomfortable? Does it, ju- it just like it's like icky to you? Were you raised to believe that like like gay people were like um, you you could like catch gay or you know like <laughs> just yeah. like so just, two people um, a man and a woman getting married um, and making a commitment to spend their life with each other. Um, most people do it in the eyes of God, right? They go to a church or they go to some type of priest and they get married. Um, I hopefully, you know, some of them are getting some like premarital counseling. They know the truth. Those people are no longer practicing sin. Even if they don't know Jesus. The, the act of them getting married is not sin. Okay. Homosexuals are practicing and celebrating sin. That's that's like the 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 basic level for me in how I make my decision. If I'm going to a gay wedding or not, or if I'm a 
um, facilitate a, a gay wedding or not. It's one, these people, when they get married, they're no longer in sin, just on the basics of what God said, right? Man and woman being married. Um, these two other individuals are continuing in sin. Unnatural practices. I mean, you got all the verses there, but that's the reason why. It's not that I'm no. uncomfortable or anything like that. It's just that's, I mean, that's what you're celebrating. I mean, to me, like, the abomination is... It's kind of like you know you know what it is. Okay, th this is an extreme example, but imagine like Freddy Krueger or Michael Myers wanted to get married, and then you know, no, and then like Jason. All right, let, let's use Jason. <laughs> Jason, 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 bro, Jason did. Jason, Jason, like he he yeah he shows up to the wedding planner. And he's like, yo, I just had a great time at Camp Crystal Lake. I killed fifty people, and I'm ready to get married. And uh, and the wedding wedding planner's like, all right, we um, you you know you're Jason, right? You kill people, um, and Jason's like, yeah, but you know, a wedding's a good thing, you know. So it, like a wedding, but like, wed no, in, in, wedding yeah, but, is not saying that but, they're because they're married now that they're gonna be saved. But that's what that's what I mean, because it's like you the still, wedding, in, the, in wedding, eyes, the wedding, you still Jason. the it's wedding, like you still Jason, the wedding doesn't, the wedding doesn't save you, that, that's right? What I mean. But what yeah. about the the woman who's going who's pregnant and then, like. She has the baby, but then there's a woman who who gets the abortion. Like, like what, what are you saying? So you have one woman who might have got pregnant out of wedlock, and she's like, "Man, I ain't keeping this baby. Dude ain't around." Um, and she she gets an abortion, but then you have the other woman. She keeps the baby. She gives birth to it. I do believe that one one is a I, sinful act. I believe one. One is a sinful. I believe one is worse than the other. I believe it's better to keep the child alive, but as to the status of that woman, in the eyes of God, both those women drop dead. I, I got, got to keep going back to that. No, 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 but no, yeah, no, 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 no. Same, no. but it's the, the same. The, one, the one, the woman gives birth to the baby. What's up? The oh, the woman. The, my bad. The woman gives birth to the baby. The woman has the abortion. Mm -hmm. They both drop dead. Mm -hmm. And they're both standing in front of Jesus. Mm -hmm. The woman who didn't have the abortion say, I'm getting into heaven now, right? She had the abortion. Jesus is like, you you, right. you way off the mark. But who, but who's saying that because the heterosexual couple got married that they're going to heaven? Who said no, that? I, I didn't say that. I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to say if like, if we just look, I just want Christians because I've seen how this discussion has gone and like and like just bringing it back to where it was at the beginning. Are we looking at it? It's like we're looking at it at a micro sense instead of having the, the macro view. Like we're not looking at it from like far enough removed and maybe just trying to see it from God's perspective. I'm just saying like at the end of the day, is there a difference? If you attend a gay wedding, it's and you're a Christian is scandalous. It is like, how could you do that? This is celebrating sin. But if it's a straight couple who is cosplaying as Christian, who is saying the vow, saying the verses, but they have not submitted their life to Jesus, they're shacking up, they're living together, they're having sex outside of wedlock. And I mean, personally, I don't know, I don't know how much God like would bless that. I've heard of I've heard of gay people who have come out, who have come out of that, who have gotten married came to Christ and come out of that lifestyle. And then as they're giving their testimony, they'll talk about how like, just how God even intervened in that marriage and just start pricking their heart and just start like sending, like sending people like to talk with them and just share, share the love of Jesus with them. And that so convicted them mm -hmm. that they left their, their, that they left that lifestyle behind and they, they laid that lifestyle down. They laid their life down. And picked up their new creation. I'm saying that's the main thing. Yeah, you know, it's like it's like what what are you? Well, I think you could say the same thing about a couple that has a baby and they're not married. You going to that baby show? Yeah, probably would. You gonna buy some diapers and some wipes? I would feel more comfortable going to that baby shower. Yeah, I don't think this is a this isn't and, a and this isn't a salvation thing. But I would ask myself, why do I feel more comfortable going to that baby shower if it's a, if it's a lesbian couple and that baby don't need pampers, that baby don't need wipes? Like, why why am I looking at their outward 
outward appearance. Maybe it would move I will, them more if I got them the Pampers, and then they would look at me and say, you a Christian. Why are you doing this for us? I thought you hated us. My mama kicked me out the house. My like, family. Because this baby needs some diapers. Exactly. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to you know? bless the baby. My family excommunicated, <laughs> but I'm trying to bless y'all. Like, they, they need to be, like, blessed, you know, like, like just as much as a straight couple do. You, you, know? you can bless them in another space. Just like you can bless the non-saved couple. You don't have to go to the wedding. I'm not, but like whether it's a wedding or a baby shower, I, I, I would say like this. I think I maybe I agree, even if I can admit that I would feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. based on like personal convictions that I need to, that I'm always examining and looking at. I can at least agree with Alistair's, Alistair's point <laughs> that um <laughs> that it's just like, and let me just read it verbatim. Into the mic, my bad. Let me just read it verbatim. Here's the thing. Your love for them may catch them off guard, but your absence will simply reinforce the fact that they said these people are what I always thought. Judgmental, critical, unprepared to countenance anything. You know, like if I go to the if I go to the straight wedding and they don't know Jesus, am I going to be mean mugging them? Like as soon as they like say I do, I'm like, y'all going to say I do to Jesus now? No, I'm, I'm a, a I'm a mean mug him if I'm, I know no. him. After I had a conversation with him, we like, we both would be doing the cha cha slide and the electric slide and the hustle, and all and all. We'd be eating the food, we'd be going up for seconds at at the straight wedding because this is Shelly from accounting who we homies with, and she got and she got a wedding that we deem more Christian and the Christian culture is more acceptable, versus you know and and I'm not saying like, I'm not saying like just. I'm I'm just saying it's like it's, I think it's just personal convictions, you know. Mm. At, at the end of the day, I think you know? my, I think that's some of that in there, like personal convictions. Some people don't think don't think anything think of it at all. And you got Christians that go to gay weddings all the time. Um, but for me personally, yeah, I would. I look at the act of is this sinful? Is this celebrating sin? Which one would God rather go to? Ask, ask Jesus which which one, which, which one would he go which one question. would he go to? Which which I I, I was thinking about Where this would too. Jesus go? I, I was thinking I was thinking about this too because Jesus is standard man we we may have to do a part 2. I was thinking about that in terms of the the prostitutes and and sinners thing, right? Mm -hmm. Um because that's a really hard question to answer. Because think think about most Christians and how we and how we posture ourselves and think about the famous Christians. Like if if it popped up that John Piper was out in New York City or something like that, and he was sitting at a table with two OnlyFans models and they were just eating. They were just eating and talking and laughing. Mm -hmm. And he and he was just having just having a good time. And he was just like just talking. His ministry would be over. Yeah. No, not, and, and he wouldn't be no discussion. These are well-known OnlyFans models. How how dare you be? And and and, and that. And so I'm like, but wait a minute. We we read it with such like like Jesus was with the tax this, collectors in the in, so in the centers. This, if I, I ate with the Enron homies, this is, this is gonna sum like, up. This is gonna sum up my point. Okay. <laughs> First of all, Jesus never. The Bible never tells us how to have a, a wedding ceremony. Anyway. Right. He doesn't say that you invite the first group of people to the wedding. You stand and you do all these things. Right. The first marriage that was ever done in the Bible was when he presented Eve to Adam. Amen. Right. Um, but we know there wasn't music playing. At least we don't know what was playing or there wasn't decorations. It wasn't no. I mean, we think that. It we, wasn't no we, temple. Gar Garden of Eden was like <laughs> was probably popping. I mean, probably do weddings the, outside. Probably had the birds singing. Stuff but, like that. you know, you know. There was, you know, angels yes. was, was playing, was playing, was playing the saxophone, <laughs> playing all type of hymns. You know, the everybody think the angels got harps. Um, like but we don't song. know what the actual like. There, there is no verse that says you have a the wedding ceremony is supposed to go like this. Everything that we do now in 2024 is based off of a lot of it is based off of Jewish tradition. culture yeah. and tradition. Like what they did for weddings, and we don't even do that right because they weddings was they 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 was seven days. Yeah, they was turning up for seven days. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but that's one thing. So, just like if we say, man, my kid is going to school, they about to graduate, 
But man, there's a whole bunch of unbelievers there at this secular university that my son is graduating from. Man, I ain't going to that thing because ain't none of them people saved over there, right? I could I could apply that same logic or that same way of thinking to any ceremony. And so for me, it's thinking of, well, what is the ceremony for? And then that's how I come up with my decision on whether I should go. I so celebrating somebody graduating from college or two people saying that they were going to commit, um, or two heterosexual people saying that they were going to commit their lives to each other, um, 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 a, 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 a woman, whether she's a believer or not, saying that even I had this baby outside of marriage, I don't know who the father is or whatever, I'm going to decide to keep this baby. These are honorable things. And I think, um, yeah, that's how I look at it, is that which one would Jesus do? One is he calls sin. And then once we add marriage and what marriage is supposed to be to it, and I was celebrating sin in the eyes of the Lord, right? And so that's why I would say. If to know, answer that question, let me read Matthew 9, 10 through 13. I know we got to wrap up. Matt, I'll just sum it up. Matthew was having, uh, di- Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house. Many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. Once again, the John Piper, if, if a bunch of prostitutes was here eating with us, how comfortable would we feel? I move on. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But, <clears throat> but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I've not come to call the righteous but sinners. So to answer your question, if it's like which which place would Jesus rather be at? The gay wedding or if they're not believers, the gay wedding or the straight wedding? And I would say if they're not believers, which place has sick people? And that's the place Jesus would rather be at. Now, if you could just now to me, both of them got sick people. Mm hmm. Because they, they don't know Jesus. So to me, there's no difference. Here's the the here's the the thing. The what's the word? A caveat in today's world, 2024, one is being celebrated. You don't throw a party for a murderer. Hey, cuz about to go to jail. You shot about 10 of them folks, bro. We finna throw a party. We finna bring all the henny. It's going down. We we don't we don't do that. We why would we why would we celebrate that? Even some people might celebrate that, probably gangs and stuff like that. They probably be like, man, we're gonna pour our little liquor for you know, little June Bug who shot up some folks who did the drive by. So they probably they actually, yeah, they do throw parties. Yeah. So but we what would we tell them? You you finna go to one of them parties? The celebrating murder party? Yeah. There's there's sick people there, right? Yeah, but but it's a celebration of fam just shot. I mean both both weddings are a celebration. And they're both celebrating sinful people who are sick. You want to birthday party? To the birthday party of who? Of the of the gay person or the murderer? Of uh, either. Cause I, I just so don't put it on I just uh, don't put it on weddings. There, I ain't going to the birthday no, party. No, but here, here's the thing, Derry. If the answer is what I go, based on personal convictions that I don't think line up with scripture, with the totality of scripture, I'll probably say no. Because it's based on my own personal conviction. Would Jesus go? I think so, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's he's he, he's, it, it, it's, it's not, he's not he's not going to do the thing that's going to have the Pharisees going like that's my guy. Also, when he walk up, I mean, he he going to change. Oh, but no, he, but he, he no. going to change the whole atmosphere when he gets. No, there. but no, but check it. We we say that, but he's not going to do the thing that's going to have the Pharisees applauding him. Like, thank God he did what we wanted him to do. He's going to do the thing that's going to have people say, "How dare he do that? Th- these people are the dregs of society. They make us look bad." I think he would do the thing that would be scandalous to do, you know. Yeah. But but that but that's me, you know. And he's Jesus. And he's Jesus. And but he's, he's in the, us. And he's the one that makes the the final. If he was physically here, he could do that. But as a community leader, as a pastor, I got to be above reproach. And people see me at a gay wedding. Guess what? Derry was turning up with us. So you already. I wouldn't do above it. reproach in whose eyes? Well. In Jesus' eyes, yeah, but why does the scripture you know, say to be above reproach? But I think I think it's to be above reproach in in like above reproach, or are you seeking the are you seeking the approval of men? Well, it's, it's 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 both. It says both. I, I think I think there's a difference between like yo, I'm above reproach versus I'm trying to please you by my conduct, and I want I want the approval of men. Yeah, 
you, you don't know. put yourself in situations, right? Yeah. Use wise judgment, right? If you know that this is going to bring about some type of negative feedback or people are going to be, um, yeah, feel a certain type of way, especially like your congregation that you're leading. Um, for me, I, w- I wouldn't. But is it, but is the negative feedback based on their own? Is it based on small mindedness? Is it based on them being judges with impure motives? Like they it said, it could be James? some of that. And it, as a pastor, sometimes you got to wrestle with if I, how is this going to affect my congregation? How is this going I to affect you, the people you. that I'm leading? How is this going to affect my wife? How is this going to affect my children? Like the decisions that I have to make, right? Um, no, that's real. How are they? You know, man, when I get back to church on Sunday, I'm going to have to do a whole sermon of teaching on why I was at the gay wedding, right? Um, you know, there's, you know, different people. So when you make decisions, you're making it based on the people that you're leading. You have to take them into consideration. Um, and so, yeah. I mean, you yeah, you want to lead well. So yeah. just like you, when you make decisions, you got to think about your wife. You got to think about, you know, little RJ, man. It's, you know, you got to think about how this is going to affect those who you are responsible for. And no, I respect so, that. You know, some some pastors, they they're okay with it. They want all the smoke. They like, man, whatever. I'm I'm not here to celebrate this. I'm here because, you know, I just I, I love this person. They know yeah. I don't support it. I've told them openly that I don't support it. I think uh Preston's uh Jackie Hill Perry's husband, he said that um I think ultimately both of them said no, they wouldn't go. Um, but the, he said if I had a conversation with such and such, then I would um then I would I would go if I'm if they gonna let me like preach a certain way or something he said but yeah I mean everybody yeah. has their their thing of why they would go but yeah ultimately you know weddings are a celebration of two people coming together and so anything yeah. that's celebrating sin in my eyes I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't be part of it whether that's a birthday party people who have invited me to the strip club man we know you married and you faithful man you ain't gotta fam I'm not going to the strip club with you fam. I'm not doing it, right? I don't care if this was your last birthday party. I'm not you. going. You know what I'm saying? God bless you. you FaceTime me. We talk on the phone. Make sure ain't no no females behind you. <laughs> and then we, we could talk. But I'm not going to the strip club. Number one, that's that that's dishonors my my marriage, right? That disrespects my wife. I'm not doing it. So, and you know, you could say feel however you want to feel, but. At the end of the day, yeah, I think, and 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 like I just want to say, like, um, like I said when this first started off, like based on personal convictions, I would probably say no to the to the strip club to like to a lot of things, but I'm just I'm just saying, like, I think it's it's important to ask why, mm-hmm. like as Christians, and to say, like, is it is it a personal thing, or am I? Or am I actually adhering to scripture or is it just a personal conviction? Yeah. You know, like am I willing to and and, and, and that's the main thing. I don't wanna I don't wanna like say like I'm being fa- I'm playing fast and loose with like the Christian life. Mm. But I'm just saying like um the Christian life is radical, man. It's like yeah. when, whenever I hear uh, whenever I hear people in a homosexual lifestyle getting saved, for the most part, mm-hmm. I've I've only ever heard testimonies of people getting saved from that lifestyle when love was extended to them at the gay at the that, gay, at the at the marriage at the wedding. Could be at the, at the at the gay pride. Have you ever seen it at the gay pride parade? We're about to have it in Chicago, and at the gay pride parade, Christians would show up with signs. I used to be the people saying you will go to hell, and saying I'm glad you and like and just saying like and all that stuff. And these and these people in the in those lifestyles would break down in tears. Mm-hmm. Like my mama, my mom ain't talked to me in years. Yeah, people I, who I thought would be there for me and stuff like that. I, I'm just that, that. That's all I'm saying. And I think Derry too. I know. I know we're closing up. Is like people can see that 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 we have disagreements, but I hope people can see that we disagree agreeably. And that's what I wish more Christians can do. So I think. Um, I think I would want. I I would hope Christians could maybe try and do what me and Derry did here today because they saw that we had disagreements. Yeah, but we're still in the body of Christ, and I think w- when that first thing, when that thing first happened with um with Alistair Begg, hope I got his name Alistair right Begg. now. Yeah, Adam just <laughs> shaked his head. Uh, when that thing first happened, and I saw Christians like across the the internet flipping on their cameras, ripping this dude a new one. Mm-hmm. I'm like, first thing, he got dropped from 
He got dropped he from the council. Shepherd's, and- Shepherd's Conference. I think like a couple other speaking engagements. And um, yeah, people were really going in on him. And I'm like, first, first, like, did y'all pray for this man? And the, and and before y'all shake y'all head, yeah, we pray. Not not I pray he changes his mind and thinks like I think. I'm like, did you pray for this man that he would have peace, that that God would just give him wisdom? He called out some folks. They was like, man, yeah. I've been knowing him for forty years, and I think he he his response was, well, how can you throw away like our friendship? Exactly. Oh, you know, we've been friends for forty years. You throw away our friendship because of what I said. I didn't I didn't affirm that that lifestyle was. You know, pleasing to the Lord. I just said that, you know, based on the relationship, you know, what He said, I would, you should go and even buy him a gift or whatever. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm just saying it's, it's the easiest. I'm not trying to like, like Lauren Hill said. Um, I'm not saying this because I'm. Per- I wish I knew the lyric. I'm not saying this because I'm perfect or like, or that I don't sometimes reach for the easy fruit of I can just prejudge somebody or I can just um, be small minded. I'm just saying like I just get worn out of seeing Christians like ripping into each other. If anything, I wanted this podcast. I mean, we may not solve like the, would you go to a gay wedding issue, but I hope we can solve the whole stop, stop having a YouTube video where you post a screenshot of you looking like, and then there's a little picture of, um, of Alistair right there. Like this pastor is going to hell. Like that's the, that's the yeah. title of the YouTube yeah. video. That was like, some, like, some people took that. his things out of context too. They were like, he affirmed it. And it was like, yo, he didn't, he didn't affirm it. Um, he didn't affirm that lifestyle um, at all. So, but you know, we, uh, man, we've been talking for a minute yeah. and um, I just want to close us out with giving those who you may, who are watching this, um, man, be prayerful about these things where right? yeah. we know that this discussions of homosexuality, LGBTQ, um, it's always a hot topic. So anytime you mention it and tenants go up um, and then, you know, you say something, people get offended. But I would say just stand for truth, stand for righteousness. Um, even what, what Ray was saying, man, like what's your personal convictions and then measure your convictions through the word. Right. Um, I was with a brother and we were talking about drinking and he's against drinking. And so I'm not. I have a drink with you, but you got a flash. Because, you got a flash right there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's out of frame. <laughs> right. But because um, drinking isn't an issue for me, but it is for him. I won't drink. I'll be like, cool, man. Give me a give me a Coke or Pepsi or something, some water. Like, I don't have to drink. You know what I'm saying? If if it's going to mess up the fellowship that I have with another believer, I'm not going I'm not going to drink, right? I become all things what Paul says, I become all things to all men, right? Um and we do that so that we can win them over and that we can bless their lives. And so um yeah, in this in this world, just make sure you use wisdom uh and be and be praying, praying for these people. Don't just bash them, don't just say a whole bunch of hateful things on your YouTube channels and yeah. making posts and all that stuff like you know, we we know that it's a sin already why is this a continual going why is this a conversation continuing to happen um it's because i think a lot of people are confused and they're confused because christians are going back and forth on it and you know um people aren't sure you know what i'm saying and so um yeah but let's let's do the most important thing which is pray let's reach out to these people Let's make sure we're we're uh, we're doing what we're supposed to do, and we're being we're showing them the love of Christ, right? We're not judging, we're not condemning nobody to the hell. Because at the end of the day, some people probably did that to Jackie, right? Jackie O'Perry, they probably told her she was going to hell, and now she saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, preaching at conferences and getting other people saved. And so, yeah, you know, just your word should be seasoned with salt, and it should be for building building people up and not tearing them down. And so and sometimes I, I, you got to call people to correction. You got to let them know the truth. Like if something is sin, call it out, right? But do those things with love and actually sit down with that person and have a real conversation. Let them know. People only care about uh, what you say when they know that you really care. Amen. And so, uh, yeah, I would, let's I would, make sure that we do that. And I would just say too, like when you pray for the people who may be in a homosexual lifestyle, and you know we're quick to pray for that but also pray for the people in the straight lifestyle who who don't know jesus and who do but but especially who don't know jesus because the gay people hear all the time that they're going to hell but the straight people 
who don't know Jesus. They never hear that. They think they're cool. And um, so I would say, I would say, pray, pray for everybody. Pray that everybody knows Jesus. That's yeah. why I says like, as like, like, pray without ceasing, man. You know, on the real. Amen. And on that note, we about to get up out of here. So thank y'all. I looked at your camera I'm for like, listening. Yeah. <laughs> they, they can't see me right now. Thank you for watching. Season three, we back. Me, my guy Ray, Adam, oh, behind the scenes. Uh, and uh, it's the weird perspective, man. And we're going to continue to bring y'all these tough topics, talking about them. Until the next one, like and subscribe. We're on the road to a thousand subs. Sub sandwiches. In Jesus' name, we out of here. Sponsored man. by Jimmy John. Peace. Peace. Love y'all.